Hi everyone, my name is James Alexander and I'm a doctoral cello performance student at the University of Kansas. Today I'm going to share a presentation with you on syncretism in Vietnamese art music. And I'll be focusing on the works of three composers, Bo Ba Nan, PQ Fun, and Nhat Minh Nguyen. So as many of us have asked, what is art music? Well, I think we can all agree that it is a type of colloquialism and it refers to some type of classical music or canonic music considered to be of high aesthetic value, typically implying advanced structural and theoretical considerations of a written musical tradition. It frequently contrasts with ordinary or everyday music, also called popular folk music. My research deals with the classification of art music, its inspiration by what is conventionally considered folk music, and the impact this has on our canon. I'd like to share this quote by Nyat on this topic. He says, Writing music is probably too general for me, as it could be anything pop or commercial music, which is not what I intend, for example. Art music helps show that in my music, I want to search, explore, or point out something not mentioned before, and does not serve as just mere entertainment. I'd like to share another quote with you by my former professor, the scholar Alexander Cannon, who has extensive correspondence with two of the musicians in this research. He suggests in his article, which he just released this year, Awakening the Soul with the Left Hand, Narration and Healing in Vietnam's Diasporic Traditional Music. For Vietnamese in Vietnam and in diaspora, Tam Hon, or Soul, is a specific strategy to re-narrate and rebuild community following war and forced migration. The concept of Tam Hon has a long history in Vietnam is one that mediates an internal experience outward towards others. Musicians create a voice for themselves and others in this community by crafting new spaces of performance and suggesting tools for managing the passage of time. To discuss this concept, we must acknowledge a significant influence from Chinese, French, Indian, and Cham culture in Vietnam. China dominated Vietnam for 1,000 years and France for 100. China was there from 111 BC to AD 938, but were never able to fully assimilate the Vietnamese and endured frequent rebellions. After AD 938, China invaded periodically, and in that year, Ngo Quyen defeated the Chinese and gained independence for Vietnam, which Vietnam was then ruled by a succession of dynasties. In the 13th century, cultural exchange with Vietnam and China assumed a more peaceful character. As the, as the Vietnamese learned plowing, growing rice, and medicinal practices from them. Chinese and Indian influences can be distinguished in Vietnamese art, for example, in the use of automatopoeia as a method of teaching drum playing, modal concepts, traditional painting, architecture, script, and theater. Next, I'm going to show you an example of a genre that demonstrates the complexity of defining musical forms which have evolved and been rewritten throughout history. This genre is called gacho. Historical development of gacho is complex and largely unexplained. The criteria for the singer is that the voice should be improvisational in expression and harmonized in pitch and meter with the lute. Lyrics are executed deftly in the rhythm subtly while intermittently tapping the clappers. Gacho was a symbolic force for national unity and historical continuity in reunified post-war Vietnam. It provides a context for the individual to remember precursors and express one's identity as Nhat Nhan, an art person. For female singers, it provides a format to resist historically rooted chauvinism and reinvent what it means to be a songstress in modern Vietnam. I'm going to show you a little bit of how Gat Chu sounds in the modern context. I'm soft and loud. So in this picture you'll see the singers playing the five clappers, here's the dandai lute, and then this is called the chang chao praise drum.
which is played by an informed audience member who influences the performance and knows the type of musical motions that they should be making. So next I want to show you how Gacho has innovated itself and shown up in more modern groups. Nyat sent me this example, which he described as a chill-out, down-tempo, trip-hop, female vocal experimental group. He says it's natural for artists to take what has already existed and appropriate it in their own way, which essentially reflects the current time that they live in. In other words, this following group, Dai Lan Lin, is using nuances from Gacho, and now with electronics, merges them together the way they want. He believes that this has to be the next step in order for genres such as Gacho to survive based on innovation. So here's a little bit of that modern group. This is called Eclipse. So, as you can see, this is one genre which has existed for quite some time and has found a reason to innovate, again, based on survival. So, my research in general is just going to focus on these three composers, Nyat Minh Nguyen, Van An Vo, and PQ Fan. I will interview them. I've already had a couple times. And I'm trying to learn more about their compositional process and intent. For the lecture recital, I will be performing my transcription of Awakening by Van An. She originally wrote it for Dan Bao, monochord zither, and cello. And I arranged it for two cellos. I'll be performing Etude by Dr. Fan, and a new electroacoustic piece by Nyat, and providing a performer's perspective on all these and how to play the music properly. Hopefully, demonstrating how the traditional music of Vietnam has integrated into modern art music. Let's focus now on Nhat Minh Nguyen and talk a little bit about his style. He has told me that he has a style based in mixed notation, graphic notation, usual metered notation, and aleatoric components. Also, his music generally has a conceptual and programmatic slant to it. He also said he was inspired by Fernie Ho and the New Complexity Movement, noting this type of notation allows for multiple trajectories in which the performer becomes the filter rather than specifying a single route. I'd like to focus on one piece he sent me, an example that tropes the gacho techniques talked about earlier. He describes two ways in which he used gacho in his writing. For transcription, he says, He's trying to copy everything exactly from the genre, including lyrics, melody, rhythms, etc. And for troping, the second method, he's taking essences or basic elements, like vocal techniques, out of their original context of gacho, and using it for his own purposes, like letting them live in new sentence structures or formal constructions. In this piece I'm about to show you, Memoir, he mainly used the second technique, troping or transferring techniques of sounds often found in gacho. Some techniques including using glottal attacks, varying degrees of nasal in singing, and clear pronunciation of Vietnamese vowels and tones in the soprano, while imitating sounds of the plucking from the lute with pizzicato and even Bartok pizzicato. Gacho is not a notated art form, so all of these techniques and sounds he tries to imitate are done with Western notation to the best of his ability. So. Here is some of the examples from the score. You can see the designation of poco nasal, these inclusions of microtonalities, and also how the lute and, well, in this instance, it's a double bass emulating a lute, but how the this line and the vocal line are imitating each other. This can also be seen in this next excerpt, the follow double bass designation, and also time is not fixed, which is alluding to that concept of improvisation. 
So let's listen to a little bit of this by Yad. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken. Oh, no. Well, they gave me an ad. So, a 31-second McDonald's ad, so that's pretty terrible. But I'll just uh, pretty much uh, buy some time here for another 10 seconds and tell you how this is a fine example of how Nyat integrated a traditional music traditional Vietnamese genre into his own conception of art music without compromising or tokenizing either. Next composer I'd like to talk about is Bo Van An. And again, I would like to reference Dr. Cannon's work and his analysis of her work, Bound, which describes her ability to narrate stories of the Vietnamese refugee experience and going back to that concept of Tom Hone that we talked about earlier. In 2014, she participated in a chamber opera titled Bound, which explores the true story of 17-year-old Diane Chan a Vietnamese-American woman working two jobs who was jailed in 2012 for missing too many days of school. The composer Huang Zhuo scores the work for Dan Chan, Dan Bao, and an ensemble of Western art music instruments. Bo works as a part of the ensemble to provide accompaniment to the singers on stage, including some dissonant sounds during traumatic episodes in the story. She also improvises alone with highly ornamented lines created by the left hand to indicate when characters on stage or imagine being in Vietnam. I'd like to show you a little bit of how she plays the Don Bao in this etude written by Fiona Lee Jones. Dr. Cannon states, Van An locates the soul of Vietnamese music in the left hand and encourages audience to observe the gestures of the left hand and the sounds they produce. She describes the left hand as producing color and an emotive quality made by liquid and nimble movements which echo the contours of the Vietnamese language. Vibrato in this sense, bending from one pitch to another and tapping ornamentation properly expresses a particular mode rather than being mere embellishments of pitch. In Bo's own words, the work of the left hand recreates the sound and vibrancy of the Vietnamese Tom Hong. This knowledge cannot be notated and serves to indicate the musician's closeness to traditional music. Back to the chamber opera of Bound, she uses the Don Bao in this way, more typical of Vietnamese traditional music, by improvising a one-minute passage, enabling the transition from Diane's conversation with Khan to Diane's appearance before the judge. Bo draw, po, draws upon her training as a musician of traditional music to reflect on the conditions of present time and space. This inspires her playing and makes a sharp distinction between other forms of opera. Euro-American opera has a long history of using approximated versions of music of the Middle East or Asia to transport audiences to supposed exotic locations. Bo does not use the instrument to help the audience imagine another time and place, but to generate a context-specific arch, argues Canon. Bo encourages the audience to reflect more fully on the present, Diane's story being told, and the space in which it is told. I'd like to show you a piece from her 2013 album, Three Mountain Pass. 
she expresses the loss and grief following war by incorporating Vietnamese funeral music in this piece titled Mourning. play you all this but just for sake of time we'll have to keep moving just to tell you more about her notable works we've already talked about bound and that was morning but i'd also like to talk about odyssey just for a moment her multimedia suite for quartet video audio samples and electronics and the music is about the terrors the boat people faced which included starving drowning and pirates the final thing i'd like to show you by Vovan on is her work with the group called blood moon orchestra where performers work incrementally to take the spectator from one cultural frame to another through various tools of narrative transformation, which can be seen in this group, utilizing traditional Vietnamese instruments played by Vo within the aesthetic of hip hop, a genre formed by record sampling and storytelling. Yeah. Politics hang on corporate purse strain The fight of the earth lanes The turn for the worst man The counter-revolution, evolution reversing Crops on fire, need rain in the worst way Temps rise higher, hurricanes and earthquakes The planet is third Alright, before we get too crazy here We'll uh, keep on going And I'll just tell you a little bit about the piece that I transcribed With, or that I will be transcribing for the lecture recital And show you about some of the Don Bao notation as you can see here, there's some tremolo, an indication of bowing, tapping the string with the bow, and then a whirlpool technique, which I still need to explicate. So last but not least, we have Piku Fan, the professor of composition at Indiana University. and I. Just to introduce him, I'd like to play his work Tragedy at the Opera, which he wrote for the Kronos Quartet back when he worked with them from 1995 to 2000. piece, Dr. Fon told me that he attempted to extend tradition in a desire to fulfill their quest of performing new culturally representative music by artists. He amplified every aspect of traditional Vietnamese music by increasing heterophony while extending the nuances of tone color, use of microtonality, and symbolism. Dr. Fon told me nowadays he often does not want to write his tempo. As he said, a really good performer should be able to tell what the tempo should be in order to make it musical. This seems to align with practice of some Vietnamese genres, such as Guan Hall, where there is no parameter of too fast or slow in their tempi. He says, the less we notate what it is supposed to be, then sometimes it is more musical. The work that I'll be studying for my lecture recital is Etude by Dr. Phan, which he told me he was inspired by J.S. Bach in its writing, and there are some clear parallels in terms of the Forchbenung type of textures, but there are some deviations as well, such as the use of chordatones and glissandi, and the, the things that are similar, however, are the use of motific transformation, some improvisatory rhythmic figurations, but the chief difference, I would argue, would be the extensive use of false natural harmonic double stops, which create a polyphonic texture, 
and allowing representation of passages that would be cumbersome or otherwise impossible. So here's some examples from the score. This is the sounding line, what you will hear versus what it is notated as. As you can see, this allows for, this is in treble clef here, but this is in bass clef. And so you can, he achieves a very high tessitur melody on the instrument. And again, with the different quick variations in pizzicato, glissando, and false harmonics. He explained to me everything in the etude is about transformation, harmonic and sonority transformation. J.S. Bach, he said, is always doing harmonic progression melodically. This is calm, soothing, and beautiful. He always wrote a lot of different techniques in the Boeing pizzicato. Bach makes technical stuff sound beautiful, and which is what he wished to accomplish in his etude. Bach uses traditional harmonies, but Fon's harmonic language is self-described as based on spectralism and some intuition. The inspiration from Bach is there, but he is thinking of ways to develop different harmonies. So let me play you just a little bit of the etude now. The respective music of P.Q. Fan, Wo Van An, and Nat Minh Nguyen communicates their experience as artists and has pedagogical and performative value demonstrated by an integration of many disciplines into new art. They contribute to the repertoire of art music, making them worthy of further performance and study. I hope this research deepens our understanding of music as a means to connect individuals rather than stratify them and does justice to those who made it possible. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.